Hello, everyone. Welcome to lecture seven of quantitative training strategies. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the momentum training strategy. So let's get started. So the momentum training strategy is a type of strategy that makes use of the strength of the press movements. So this gives us an indicator of the relative performance of each asset. And uh, we're going to look at which asset we're going to go long or go short. It involves buying or selling a selected set of assets according to the recent trends of the press trends and the underlying assumptions that these trends will continue to uh, move in the same direction and uh, there's enough momentum behind it. So, uh, so again, we're looking at a set of assets and we're going to look at the driver assets, meaning those assets with enough momentum uh, in the game direction uh, based on the expected price changes. So there are usually three factors uh, involved in this strategy, the volume, volatility, and time frame. This strategy is cost sectional. So if you want to compare with the previous trade falling strategy, uh, this is the first notable difference. So the momentum trading strategy is cross sectional, meaning it compels the moments of multiple assets and choose the ones with the high momentum to invest in. Right. So for example, if I have uh, 10 assets and I want to choose the top five assets, um, that I want to invest in. So the essence is that it analyzes the relative difference between multiple assets, right? This is the relative term is key here. And at each specific point in time. So it also calls the relative type of momentum compared to the trend following strategy, which we discussed earlier, which is more of an absolute momentum. Um, specifically, the trend following strategy uses the time series momentum uh, uh, in its own history to focus on the, the asset's own historical returns. Right? Um, this is also called the absolute type of momentum, where the traders focus on the time series data of a particular asset. There's no comparison with other assets, purely on its own historical data. So the momentum training strategy uses a uh, a few windows. In this case, there are two windows. A uniform look back window, right, to look at what is the historical performance, right, of multiple assets, and then another uniform look look ahead window. So once look back, once look ahead, and this look ahead is to, used to determine the time frame of holding the position, right, how long do I want to hold the position when I make a trading decision. Let's look at the uh, trade form, uh, the comparison uh, graphically. So here I have the X axis as time, and this is price. And um, uh, I'm, I'm joining three uh, stocks here in terms of their price movements. So now assume that uh, at, at this time point, I want to make a trading decision, right? So using the momentum trading strategy, I will involve two windows. So first window is the look back window, which is the same size for all the stocks. That's why it's uniform. And uh, this is used to assess the relative performance. It can be a specific metric. Um, uh, for example, the uh, price, the, uh, the, the cumulative return for the past six months, right? So under this metric, I will assess their relative performance. So it's a relative momentum. And then there's another window, which is called look ahead window. So this is used to determine the holding position, the holding period for all assets, right? So it could be one month, two months. And then uh, this can be thought of as the um, out of sample period. So we formulate a strategy here and we make a training decision and look at how the performance will be in this look ahead window. So after that, at the next uh, point, uh, we're going to make another decision and repeat the same process to look back six months and then treat 
uh, at this point and then hold the position for one month. So this is uh, essentially how the strategy works. So the momentum training strategy assesses multiple assets at the same time point, same snapshots in a cross sectional manner. So meaning we're comparing uh, this is vertically against multiple assets and select assets with the biggest momentum, right? So for example, asset A has the biggest momentum and we will go with asset A and go long uh, if it's uh, in, in, increasing in price. And uh, now let's recap a bit about the trend following strategy. So here is our current time point and uh, we're going to look at only one, one asset, one stock. So the trend following strategy involves uh, two windows. Uh, both are look, looking back. So the longer look back window generates one moving average, which uh, is not shown here, but is again another derived series based on the raw price data. And we have the shorter look back window to generate uh, one more moving average curve. And these two curves, when they cross over, then it generates a trading signal, right? So a trading signal is generated if there's a crossover between these two moving averages of different window sizes. Typically it's five and 20. Now um, the, trading, the trading interval is not fixed. So it's purely data driven, right? We're not sure when the trading action is gonna occur but the, the occurrence of the trading action is purely based on the condition we set in place. All right, so there's uh, different terms uh, we have here about the momentum training strategy. So again, assume that this is our uh, time curve and uh, this is our current time point. So at this point, I will have three different periods, uh, which I call the measurement period, formation period, and evaluation period. So the measurement period is looking at the uh, historical of data that I will use to determine the, the uh, momentum. Right? In this case, it's, it's uh, six months. So each interval is one month, and I'm going back by six months. So this is called the historical measurement period. And this falls within the look back window. All right, and uh, now I want to look at the uh, look ahead window. So, um, so, so this, so this is the trading formation period. That's uh, so. Um, this is my current time point, and this point actually represents the point I want to make a trading decision. And because this decision, I'm um, looking at the monthly level. So it can occur at any point in time of this month. So this is called the trade formation period, right? Um, because this is not the, the daily level, this is a monthly level. And uh, each month I can make, I can form the decision, a trading decision at any point within the month. Um, so so uh, and when I make a decision and I will look at the performance, for the next month. So this is called the performance period, uh, which is a one month uh, look ahead, right? So one month uh, of the, uh, ahead of the current month. So this is the, the uh, evaluation period. So, uh, which is also called the, uh, the performance period. And uh, now let's look at how the decision is made. So at this point, I'm going to look at uh, Although, I'm, although my historical period is six months, and I will actually look at the uh, terminal monthly return. So this gives me my actual uh, metric to compile against different assets. So this represents a six months terminal monthly return, uh, which is used to generate the trading signal. So this is a summary, a metric summary snapshots of the six months uh, performance data. Uh, the, the historical performance data uh, come and form a single metric. And then we're going to use it to compile different assets, generate a trading signal at this month, 
and then uh, measure the performance at the evaluation period. So that's how uh, essentially it works. Um, so let's look at the, the, the codes. Um, we later will provide a detailed lab for the how to implement the strategy, but the, let's uh, just look at the essence here. So the essence is that I have the data frame which stores the, the uh, cumulative six months monthly returns, right? And again, essentially it captures the metric uh, for each month. And I want to create a month, which is the end of measurement period, which is uh, which is this month, right? So end of measurement period. And then I want to look at, uh, so this is, uh, so this is, uh, as, uh, I'm using the block condition. So the condition is that I want to choose the top performers. So rank equals to four means that it is located at the, uh, the top uh, 20 percent type. Right, uh, in terms of the uh, the uh, perf in terms of the performance metric, so uh, and that extract the index, the stock, and then get the value. So I have about six stocks, which are the top performers within the period. Uh, so this is uh, these are the stocks that I want to go long. And similarly, the bottom twenty percentile I will uh, extract it, and then uh, these are the stocks I will go short. Right, because uh, the press does enough momentum based on the historical data that they will continue to decrease in price. Right. So now when I measure the total profits uh, of the momentum training strategy, I will look at the stocks that I will go long, right? Take the average price and average return, minus the, uh, the return from the short positions so this is a minus because it's short position. So this constitutes the total return I have for the momentum training strategy. All right, so that's it for this video and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.